Okay. Uh, anyway, I'll start over. <laughs> My name is Bill Tenney. I'm from Pompano Beach, Florida. Uh, I graduated from the Faith Farm campus at Okeechobee on um, August the 21st, <coughs> August the 19th of 2014. Um, I was born September 28, 1962, so 53. I grew up in a loving family and was the youngest child of four siblings. Sunday school was always a big part of my young childhood and I've always believed in Jesus. When I was eight years old, my parents got divorced. For many years, I bounced back and forth between parents. I always had a sense of not really belonging. Looking back, I think I developed this fantasy world where I always wanted to be somebody else. I was involved in sports and other community activities, Boy Scouts, Sea Cadets, Key Club, and I had high aspirations for myself, but I seemed to lack the drive to stick with any of them. When I was 15 or 16, I discovered that alcohol gave me that sense of belonging and confidence I seemed to lack. Not long afterwards, I started smoking pot. And I had a new set of friends and life became a big party. My hopes for success were replaced with the desire to do anything that was fun. I had a lot of hobbies and pastimes. I served and hunted and always going camping all over Florida. It seemed like I was always doing something fun. The guy I knew as a young child was put on the shelf only to be used for some sort of foxhole prayer to get me out of my occasional brush with trouble. As I entered my late teens and early 20s, I was working construction full time. I worked hard and played even harder. It was then I began to use harder drugs. My chemical use went from recreational to dependency. For the next 20 years, I went from periods of casual use to binge use. I had countless failed relationships and become selfish and self-centered to the extreme. I met my first wife when I was 28, and we married when I was 30. My first son was born in 1995. Patty brought to me some stability that, that I'd been lacking in my life. And uh, I, began, I began to manage my unmanageability. <laughs> my substance use put a heavy strain on our marriage. I saw that I needed to make a change for the first time when I brought my wife to tears, it was 1999. As a young child, I went to Methodist church. When my folks got divorced, I went to a Catholic church and began to believe that if I looked good on the outside, I would be okay on the inside. And God would consider my good to be better than my bad. I went through all what I thought was required of me. I even became a third degree Knight of Columbus. Good intentions weren't working. A friend of mine invited me to First Baptist at Jensen Beach, so I took my wife and my son. It was the first introduction to grace and forgiveness that I ever had. I really felt at home. In October of 99, we went to the hospital to have our second child. My wife died in childbirth that day. My infant died so days My world changed that day. If it wasn't for the people at First Baptist and my family, I don't know if I would have ever gotten through it. For two years, I raised my son by myself. I continued to go to First Baptist, still trying to look good on the outside. In late 2001, I remarried with, with a new wife taking away some of the responsibilities and burdens of being a single dad. My drinking and drug, drugging began to escalate. Within three years, I was out of control. For the next eight years, I'd gone to two rehab programs and had two different periods of sobriety. We had two more beautiful children, but finally, my wife couldn't take any more of the substance abuse that we used. The first time I got sober it was for a period of about two and a half years. I went to a lot of AA meetings. I got involved. I had a couple of sponsees and was doing service work. 
Eventually, my meeting attendance slowed down and I started to romance drugs. I began to think, hey, I'm going to AA. Drugs are an outside issue, right? <laughs> well, like Bobby C. says, the drug bone is connected to the alcohol bone. <laughs> the second time I got sober was for about a year and a half. And I went to a lot of A meetings. I got involved. Had a couple of sponsees. Was doing service work. And I slowed down on my meetings again. I began to think, hey, maybe my problem was really drugs. I should be able to have a beer. Like Bobby C. says, the alcohol bone is connected to the drug bone. <laughs> this time I was headed for the worst of worst relapses. I drank and drugged like there was no tomorrow. I ran through the money that I got from a settlement for my first wife's death. I had a DUI arrest, a drug paraphernalia arrest. I lost my house. I flipped my truck. It was a beautiful truck. F-250 Super Duty, 12-inch rip, 40-inch mud train, Max Turbo, Diablo Power Chip. To this day, people ask me, Hey Bill, whatever happened to your big truck? I tell them, I was upside down and I had to get rid of it. <laughs> kind of a blessing in disguise, though. The insurance money paid for my extremely high attorney fees. Oh yeah, I lost a Jeep, a boat, and a motorcycle, too. I was broke, homeless, spiritually bankrupt. My prayers went from God help me to God please take me. I wanted to die. But God, that was for Rick, had a better plan. He brought me through the gates of Faith Farm Okeechobee, hallelujah. When I, was, when I first got there, I heard about a man who hung himself in the barn. That sounded like a viable option. Ten months seemed like an extremely long time. I didn't think I was going to make it. One day at a time, some of those days seemed like weeks. I began to look up. I began to smile. I began to believe that God really does love me. My first inspiration came from 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. And the second one was Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. You do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Amen? Amen. What that means to me is that I am not my past, and He doesn't hold my past Amen. against me. Y'all know that? Amen. I began to believe that I am worthy not because of anything I have done, but because of what He did on that cross for me. He made me holy, righteous, and redeemed. He washed away that horrible past. I learned how to love others as He loves us. Real, deep, genuine love. Like I never thought possible. I developed a relationship I didn't know could exist with the loving creator of the universe. The faith farm taught me how to be a man, a mighty man of valor, a warrior for Christ. After 10 months of being at faith farm, I needed to have a solid plan of recovery. I needed to stick to it. First, I decided to return to First Baptist of Jensen Beach. They welcomed me back with open arms. For the most part, they didn't judge me, though there were some skeptics. Second, I made a list of recovery meetings that I would attend in both Celebrate Recovery and AA. I lined up work, a place to live, and I found someone that would finance a truck. My sister was gracious enough to loan me a small down payment. She believed in me. I got involved in praise and worship ministry men's ministry, and Haiti missions. I've been to Haiti on five trips, using my talents as a master carpenter um, to build an awesome facility that houses 16 missionaries in the colonies. Wow. It accommodates 150 children each day so, so they can be fed. Um, it's an awesome place. You know, there's nothing like seeing the looks on their face when, uh, 
when they see how much you love them. I regularly speak at New Horizons Detox Facility with my AA home group. And I use my AA platform as a tool to share the gospel with those who are seeking a higher power. What better place? If they want it, I got it. <laughs> I've become the father God wants me to be. And my ex-wife and I have a better relationship than ever before. Can you imagine that? I am a permanent fixture at the Okeechobee campus now, sharing my testimony with the students and volunteering with Class 6 graduates as they prepare to enter the next phase of life, stressing the continuation of their relationship with Jesus and the active participation in their recovery. I know that if I keep my trust in Christ, life will continue to get even better, and He's proven that to me. I'm very grateful to be here tonight, or today, and I owe such a tremendous debt of gratitude to Faith Farm, the staff, and the administration for all that, all that they've done for me and brought me through. Um, you know, uh, I'm a changed man, and uh, I'm blessed to be here. Thank you.